Hey there, and thanks for watching. So I just finished uh, watching a video about uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, from Upper Echelon Gaming, and it prompted a few thoughts. Uh, he, he started talking about the skill tree and how even when you want to focus on a single build, it is absolutely impossible to like go for a tanky two-handed uh, character because they throw in all of these assassination ranged weapon um, modifiers in there so even if you do do your very best to min max towards that one weapon type that one play style uh, defense type it's not going to be that much of a difference between what your character has turned into and what someone else has turned into of course, he hasn't like completed the game. It's an open world thing, so it's going to be a stupid amount of time to even finish it. If he does ever finish it. But it made me think about how uh, Clicker Heroes 2 is currently set up. And what is being done to basically help players progress even if there are mistakes. So currently in the experimental phase, there's the normal difficulty and the hard difficulty. And the only difference is your power scaling for the most part. Uh, there's also, I think, hero soul difference. Uh, it's been a while, so it's all a bit vague. Um, but the main thing is development isn't just developing interesting features and functions for players to utilize it's also ensuring a minimal fail state now what do i mean by that i mean that it is ensuring that regardless of how badly a person plays progression is able to be made and maybe i shouldn't be using the term play maybe i should be using the term uh, planning strategizing uh, min maxing as the term and so when you're playing the game um, there's several different types of players there's the player that just wants to jump in get stuff done um, be in the moment be in the action and just continue and look at the next point on the tree and be oh that sounds cool I want damage I want stealth right now um, without looking at what's going on 20 steps ahead. And then there's players who will spend two days looking at calculators to figure out, is this idea that I have even worth playing? And I fall into the latter category. I'm kind of a altaholic on Path of Exile. And when I plan out a new build, I open Path of Building and look at items, look at path trees, and spend about two or three days uh, just playing with what a level 90 character would have at its disposition. And as a result, my characters do somewhat okay uh, without having to copy-paste what someone else is doing. But not every player is like that. A lot of players just want to play the game and not worry about that stuff. And if they are playing a game where you have to worry about that stuff they want to be able to copy someone else's um, build idea um, and just be able to focus on the gameplay and not worry about what do i need to make this optimal which is perfectly fine so how does this relate to skill trees and development in clicker heroes 2 so it had me thinking how can you actually be able to satisfy both players? And I'm wondering if difficulty scaling is actually the best way to go about things. Even myself, um, when I first opened up Clicker Heroes uh, 2, <laughs> uh, I looked at the skill tree and even though I loved the fact that there was so many options, so many ways to play, I was completely lost and just crashed and burned. 
<laughs> basically. Um, I didn't understand what was valuable and what was not valuable. And then I switched to wizard, started to understand the multipliers and all of that. And then went, I went back to Sid. Uh, I had a better time because I understood how the game scales and how uh, mechanics interact with each other. Unfortunately, we have like two very different characters. We have the wizard, which is honestly fairly straightforward. You can really only go in one direction. Um, and pathing is mostly about getting out a calculator and looking at which branch, uh, which uh, cattail, no, get what those um, double back uh, cues are called, uh, which one of those has the most optimal about amount of multipliers, and picking that one. Whereas Sid, you basically have auto attack build and damage build, but auto attack build is basically useless i'm not gonna say completely useless but it is so far below the power level of a well-rounded click build that it gives me depression <laughs> um so if we go with the idea that game development is about minimizing character mistakes player mistakes Changing how power level scales will not prevent a person from um, destroying their character because they went down the wrong path or they um, spread out their points amongst both auto attack and click and now they don't deal enough damage in either. Apparently the current plan for the next character, the thief character, is to have like set paths and once you pick your archetype, you are stuck and locked into this archetype. Me, I don't really enjoy that very much because you're basically locked into whatever the developer says that you're locked into. But I understand how this can be a huge improvement for a newer player. You see that poison does stuff. You want to role play with the poison character um and you go down that path and you don't have to worry about how it's going to interact with the rest current iteration of sid doesn't have that advantage so i'm wondering would it be a possible idea to lock out some of the paths in the current skill tree for Sid on normal and easy difficulty. Not like completely lock it into a specific build, but at least reduce the amount of um, options and mistakes that a person can make. And this would affect like an easy difficulty and the current normal difficulty. And as they progress and pick up more things like uh, Glorious Bounty, or click or not click yeah oh the clickable uh, hand of liberos they unlock more options in the skill tree and it naturally expands that's there's going to be needing a huge rework on the skill tree but because it's developing in this train of thought it's easier um to not have a bunch of random stuff everywhere that's not going to be as satisfying for myself. And considering hard mode is supposed to be the challenge, how a uh, challenge of not only your patience, <laughs> uh, but mostly challenge of your understanding of the game itself and how far you can push it. This isn't going to be in hard mode. Hard mode, the entire thing is revealed from the start and you have to figure it out. Of course, uh, they have been working on stuff for the last two months. I'm not sure if this is already an idea that they have, but it's something that came to mind as I was made it this far. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.